321 Wickerson Studios. Thank you for joining me. Um, I am basically going to show a little bit of why it's worth getting into Tinkercad, Tinkercode, Rhino, Grasshopper, and then into the nodes and programming in Python. Uh, this is pretty basic um, as it comes to Python nodes, but the learning curves are pretty steep. So I would say if you are interested in this you're gonna have to spend three months looking at things uh, maybe a little deeper but I want to give credit right away to this uh, rhinoceros grasshopper is producing incredible McNeil's Europe is producing these incredible series of videos as they come out I, I have jumped into them and I am thrilled to get into these three workshops that happened in the last two weeks uh, please take a look at the free flash workshops in GH Python nodes um, I've only looked at the first couple. I have a little bit of knowledge of Python. So it's been uh, slowly applying it and transitioning from working in node networks uh, to working in scripting a little more. And obviously, I'm very novice and basic at this, but I want to show you what's going on. Uh, that said, here we go. Uh, it, what's happening here is I built a pretty cool geometry, and I baked it. Uh, I'll just go here and show you that it's baked. Uh, it's been in rendering mode and in uh, technical mo uh, rendering mode and artistic mode. Uh, basically, the script is following uh, a series of B-reps that I then uh, have have piped a series of uh, rotated uh, geometries, which are basically lines. Let me leave this on and let me actually take this object and put it into uh, get it off the screen for a time and what you can see is happening is you have these geometries that have layered in a conch form and very a lot of this is just totally you know thrilling for me to just discover uh, I certainly don't have a plan when I go about it I have a little plan basically learn as much and try and convert the uh, grasshopper to Python and try and wrap my head around it <clears throat> so piping a bunch of forms uh, there's a multiplier for the rotation of these curves. The curves are based on a very simple, um, and there's no real point of adding the Z axis to the points yet, uh, but totally gaining some parametric control, not just in the rotation of the objects uh, with this Pi tool. It's going to take a little longer to run this script than I'm used to, but you can see I can start to play with that script a little bit. Um, probably not so needed to take the domain and rotate it that much around, but you've got some pretty cool you know geometries that you gotta remember I'm a caster and a metal worker so thinking of the control to, to throw into these objects and generate these different forms uh, with a few number sliders is just you know my, my mind's getting blown uh, if you haven't heard from past videos you know I used to be a math and computer science dropout in the 90s <laughs> and so after 30 years of making work and sculptures to come back and see this visualization and simulations of what I might want to make and working hard on a script versus working hard on a, uh, like one iteration and then being able to generate all things is amazing. Um, this is the, the node script over here. Uh, sorry, this is the Python script node over here. And as I go into it, I have a little bit of numeric control and I state a pretty simple mass and I bring them out into points and ranges and rotations. Uh, even though I could start to script that in here, you'll see how simple my Python scripts are. And the one thing to watch with this is whenever you're setting things, you have to go to the type hints. You have to deal with, uh, if you're going to go into lists, and hopefully I can make a shift into list control, the list access. But right now I'm dealing a number of item access. So it will get more and more complex as I go, I hope. And then maybe I can get into tree access once I wrap my head a little bit more around data trees. For the novice into intermediate and starting to think this might be a tool for you, please watch these videos. Go in here and watch these. See what sense you can make of them. Uh, they're pretty incredible one-hour videos. My two boys are giggling away in the background. I'd like them to be quiet. Um, and what I've done here is I've showed, shown, um, and I'm just going to go back into shaded, uh, shaded in both these forms, and maybe just go to perspective view. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'll go back down into uh, perspective view, which I've changed my front screen to that. Now let's flip it around so it's actually making sense. Oh, this is always fun trying to figure this out. Well, that's odd. I guess that's the orientation I put it on. Oh, it was the front plane in perspective. That's why. Um, needless to say, there it is. Uh, I'm able to script 
uh, this geometry by importing simple maths and then basically you know as I go I like to print my output and know what I'm dealing with so I'm printing a which is basically uh, uh, setting to the point range as I go I think my first print was just printing X so printing the number coming in from X so as I change that you can see the number has to change and everything changes uh, in my data and my geometry so you got to be really careful with these slower scripts as you start to pipe and uh, uh, maybe loft them in other situations but basically all my data is dependent on that X entrance and that X is set as a type integer you got to be specific about doing that. I'm going to generate a range from x uh, to x times y squared and step uh, up to 10 um, and do 10 steps of that. So you're, you're finding out here I'm getting these number streams uh, for data, which is obviously going to build geometry if I start using that to points. Remember, the key to all my lectures have been end with the point. Maybe pipe it, maybe interpolate it and pipe it afterwards. But to keep your scripts running and to really delve into the math behind them, you've got to get into these uh, forms. And what's happened there is I've taken A as an output, and I've also uh, asked it. I printed it again to see what it is, and then you can see what comes up from that data as I bring it out into Grasshopper and into these point coordinates. I do the same to B and multiply uh, A, what I generated for me, A, the points, and multiply that by B. Uh, and B is a number slider that I could do as well, set under integer, and I'll do that again, type hint integer and uh, then I go into C and I import a little bit of maths because I wanted to do the math cosine and obviously this whole form will change awesomely if I just you know took C and cut and paste this um, and paste it again down here but then you know maybe change that over from cos back down to sine and uh, who knows what tangent I'll do uh, I have no idea. Uh, let's hit test and see what happens to my geometry. It's obviously got to change, and C is going to go from, there you go. Just change your geometry. Ooh, I like that better. I really do. And now this is going to be really, really tiny. If I go in here again and uh, try some other trigonometry, and I know it's going to shrink, or it's going to blow up. I have no idea what it's going to do, and I just did something wrong. I just took my length off. Let's uh, go back. Let's just go here. I shouldn't be working in a coat. Uh, let's try tangent. I have no idea, and it'll probably crash if I do that. So before I run that, um, Z I brought in as a float, and I'm able to play with uh, Z being a uh, just a float between 0 and 2.00, because I like pi uh, and dealing in pi. And then I'm multiplying C uh, is actually uh, the math of those things. Sorry. And then D. I, I find the length of B <laughs> uh, as a function, so I have a number to deal with, and I'm simply multiplying that by C. So it goes from positive or negative, and it's lifting and lowering this into a positive and negative axis, which is actually pretty useless for my script. But like I said, I'm trying to I'm trying to think the way I normally think down here in rotations and series and ranges, because node-based scripts are very good for the visual artist and designer. But if you want to abstract it and have more control, you're going to have to abstract it into maths. Hope this makes sense to people who are at this point in their life. Uh, if there's obviously creative people out there that are trying to find form, um, ooh, I am I'm just thrilled by that. Before we before we leave, I do want to just take a quick bake of that because I have a feeling Tan's going to crash my program. I could be wrong, but I'm just going to quick take a quick bake of that, see what happens, and of course, just taking a minute um, to bake that into Rhino. Um, Hold your, you're going to find yourself more and more, like I said, from the points. You're going to be going back into the maths, into the ranges. Now I'm into the script node of the Python node, which comes out of uh, here. Uh, and I'm, I'm tempted to go into my little solo learn and see how well my, how good I am at my C++ programming. But uh, let's throw this on. And there's a pretty cool form that I just would not. And once again, I would never go into Rhino and start trying to make this form. So that said... Uh, Let's just try a little render, see what it looks like. Ah, render's not so good. Um, I'm curious what the uh, wireframe looks like on that. It's crazy, and uh, definitely the pen, something worth looking at. Take a second to get into that, and maybe the uh, artistic, unless it crashes on the pen. 
I've learned to become a little patient and deal with defeat and misfortune a little better in my life because of coding and scripting. Uh, and we'll just try one other thing if this doesn't crash out on me. If not, we're at 10 minutes already. There's your pen. Pretty fun little script. Bring it back into something simple. And let's just go for running it uh, with the tangent. And this video kind of dragged on. And what happens? And obviously, we're not seeing it. We're going to have to go into hiding this geometry that I was happy I made. And then we're going to have to go back in and take a look at uh, uh, what's. Whoa, something popped out. Uh, not sure what I have here. I got a Python node in the way in the works. I have no idea what I did to that. There it is. So Tan just absolutely ballooned it, and I don't know what I've got. So to think of that form baked, which might be really nice. <laughs> so if I bake that form, um, I should have done it on another layer. Oh, I should have. Um, maybe in baking it. Give it a second. I've got a plan, and I kind of wouldn't mind people sharing with me their creative aspects of this. I've had some great students. Uh, not sure what's happening geometrically, but my idea whether this finishes up in the next couple of minutes is to take this form, uh, group it together. So, because I didn't choose to bake it that way, grab all this object. There we go. Just grab all that object and uh, I'm just going to group it or do whatever I have to do. Leave this for a second. And then with that form, I'm going to swap it out with the hidden form. I'm going to take this one and group it and uh, join it. And now, um, yeah, you can see that it was quite a monster. Uh, they're grouped together. And now I'm going to reveal them both. Uh, I'm tempted to put it on another layer before I reveal it. So now if I take that object and I try something nuts like uh, Rhino uh, Boolean uh, Difference, select poly surfaces to subtract from, yeah, and uh, subtract poly surfaces to subtract with, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if the Boolean Difference in progress works. Nope. Uh, Boolean difference failed, and no doubt it would, because I've had so much trouble in Rhino trying to do crazy stuff like this. It's best to leave it for the script. Generated it, uh, generated imaginatively in, uh, uh, definitely imaginatively in Grasshopper, um, and certainly in the Python nodes. As I go back into that, um, I can I can easily go back to the cosine by just hashtagging this out, which I like. Uh, shift hashtag, and that'll make that a comment. If I wanted to get rid of this one and this one, um, I'll just show you a little trick that I've been, you know, I keep forgetting. But just grab these two scripts, hold down command, and backslash, and boom, you, you put them out. And now you can run your script as, as a sign again. Long talk, 13 minutes, showing you the power of starting to get into this. And I don't think you need to know all that information. So, um, yeah, that's it. We'll pop open the grasshopper script again. We'll hit a little save on this. Uh, we'll call it Wickerson Studios 01 Save from Python Scripting Tutorials. And I hope you definitely found it interesting. Uh, I know I did. I've got two ugly forms here. Uh, uh, oh, I don't even know what I did. I guess I could just select. I guess I'm just deleting things. Don't even know what I'm doing. Um, anyhow, welcome to it. I hope you have fun with it.